Welcome to another episode of the A-List Movie Club. I am your host, the Game Changer, Wes Truth. And of course, with me as always are Dominic and John. How's it going tonight, guys? Good, good. How you doing? Good. And uh, of course, this is the show where each week one of us picks a different movie for the others to check out and for themselves too. And uh, this week it's John's turn. John, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you picked? Um, thank you. I picked uh, Pirate Radio. Um, like I said last time, I watched a show on YouTube called Cinema Sickness. And uh, he recommended it, said it was a good movie. So just based off that, I came across a copy and I picked it up and uh, here we are. Set in 1966, a pirate radio station called Radio Rock broadcast rock music 24 hours a day from international waters to Britain, where rock and roll is only played one hour a day. We meet the colorful DJs and characters aboard Radio Rock. But meanwhile, the British government tries to shut down the pirate radio stations for good. And uh, this movie is also known as The Boat That Rocked. Uh, that was its title in Britain and England, I believe, um, when it came out. But in America, it was pirate radio. Um, it was, and it was directed by Richard Curtis, who also did Love Actually and Notting Hill. And it was released on November 13th, 2009 in the United States. So, uh, John, since it was your pick, you want to talk about it first? Uh, sure. I, like I said, I, I do nothing about this movie. I don't know that I ever even heard of it. Um, the cast is really good. Um, uh, I like that it's about music, you know, and movie about music, so two of my favorite things together. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I liked, I thought it was funny. I thought it was, it was, it was well made. It was good. All the acting was fine. I thought it, you know, it didn't really lag. It moved along pretty well. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I really enjoyed the movie. I, I you know, it was a two hour movie that did not seem like it was two hours long. Yeah. Uh, again, all the acting was fantastic. Um, the characters I thought were very interesting and unique. Um, yeah, I thought, the, and the soundtrack was amazing. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, I I I really really liked this movie a lot. I did. Yeah, yeah. I liked it more than I thought it would. I was, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, tell me. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I didn't know what to expect at all with this movie. I, I had heard of it, um, but I never saw it, obviously. Um, uh, what My big suggestion, and this is what we did when we watched it, was to put on the subtitles, because the first, like, 10 minutes of this movie, I was like, I don't understand what's being said. <laughs> it's a lot of quick talking and jokes coming this way that way and i'm like oh, i caught that but i don't know what this guy is. so we turned the subtitles on and then it was a lot better um from then on um easier to catch what was being said um i thought this was an interesting subject matter um i really didn't know much about pirate radio and this going on in the 1960s and whatnot with rock music. Um, so it was interesting to learn more about that history. Um, I thought it's a clever story with lots of subplots, lots of characters, but it's well balanced. Um, and for the most part, we care about what's going on. It's not like, oh, well, this, this story sucks or whatever. Um, it gives a lot of the characters something to do and it all blends nicely together. Um, some of the highlights of the team trying to figure out who his dad is on the boat. His father could be on there, but he doesn't know who he is. Um, the fight between Gavin and the Count uh, to see who's better and an interesting round of chicken, to say the least. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and, and a wedding on the boat was a highlight as well. And where that goes is a little shocking. Um, lots of good laughs. This cast is great. Philip Seymour Hoffman is awesome as always. I've never seen that man give a bad performance. Uh, even if it's not in the greatest movie, he's always the best part. Um, so you know he always gives it at all and he makes it seem effortless. Uh, <laughs> just like he's like, whatever, here, I'm going to give you another Oscar winning performance. <laughs> um, yeah. And I, yeah, it's such a shame that he passed away. Um, and I thought Riz, 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 Riz Eisen, yeah, I never can say that name, uh, it was funny as uh, Gavin, the sex pot, or whatever you want to call him. <laughs> yeah. Um, Obviously, great soundtrack. The Who, the Beach Boys, the Stones, the Kinks, Jimi Hendrix. I think it said there were 60 songs in the entire movie, which is amazing. So Yeah, great song. Uh, yeah, uh, just another hit, hit after hit there. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun with this movie. And like you guys said, more, I enjoyed it more than I expected to. Yeah. I mean, the... the other than the main stars, the cast is pretty unknown. Yeah. Like right. that, that kid who was on board the boat, I didn't really know who right. he was. No. That yeah, I only knew the main ones, Nick Frost. Uh, I knew uh, Bill Nye. Bill <laughs> Nye, yeah. Yeah, other than that. Uh, Kenneth Branagh. Yeah, oh yeah. Who was kind of a dick. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I didn't really know the other like the minor characters but they were all very good yeah mm -hmm. right oh chris o'dode i knew from oh. bridesmaids and there was like that stretch where he was like in almost every other movie that was coming out in between after bridesmaids and like the years after <laughs> he kind of has that face like oh, i've seen that guy before yeah mm -hmm. and uh the one who played the kid's mom emma thompson oh emma thompson yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that was five minutes like a cool cameo, yeah. Yeah. Very British cast, I think, except for Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. yeah. Who in the movie plays the American, so it worked out. It made sense, yeah. Yeah. I thought it was, I mean, it was entertaining. Like you said, I liked all Definitely, the... yeah. They, the ensemble, it put it all together. It wasn't just focused on one guy. They all had a part. Right. Like, and, they all got their spots in. I think, like, coming from that it was the director of Love Actually, I think he likes to do that a lot. Oh, yeah, like, a lot of those type of... But this was interesting that it was basically all in the same setting. Yeah. Like, Love Actually is, like, all over the place in different settings. So this that was interesting that they could put this all basically in one place and still have it work. I was wondering, like, how do they get food and stuff? Like, do they have to, they have to go ashore at some point? Or, I guess, no, both were, out to them? They had, that, they had the cook, but... Yeah, but uh, he needs I, food yeah. to cook. <laughs> he probably <laughs> would, man. yeah. They, they send supplies to them. People bring it over on boats. Okay. After, I don't want to spoil things in a movie, after what the girl does to the teenage boy mm -hmm. <clears throat> i've been there i've done that anyway <laughs> <laughs> the part where he sits on the bench just sad and they're playing that song what was it called i lost you marianne whatever the song was called oh yeah <laughs> that was all the script called for the other two actors who sat next to him was all improv oh wow i'm sitting next to him they were trying to get him to laugh and like sort of break character or whatever and then yeah. up thinking, you thought it was that's how friends really would act you know try to cheer you up that way mm -hmm. um it's based on a couple of different ships they just sort of you know mushed it together there was one that actually sank um the kenneth Bronig's secretary or whatever miss c oh okay yeah her real last name was clit we had Mr. Clot and Mrs. Clint working for him. That's funny. <laughs> they changed it to Miss C because they, I guess, for the rating, they couldn't have two 
inappropriate names. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, a lot of the old clip is actually from the 60s. It was donated by people who were like collectors and stuff. Wow. Hmm. Um, no Beatles songs were used because they couldn't get uh, permission. I figured as much, yeah. Um, it said the music is supposed to be, uh, uh, what's the word now? A I'm probably not saying it right. Anachronistic, is that the right word? Mm -hmm. I mean, they play music from the 60s, but not necessarily from 1966. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like some songs came from like 67 or 68, or, but it was still that time period. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and the last one that, when it's sinking, that freaky guy with the beard mm -hmm. has that trunk full of records he's trying to save. Yeah. yeah. Save that, that one record mm -hmm. that was by the Incredible String Band. That was the, Whoever the hell that is. But. Yeah, I never heard of them. That's what I was going to pick for our music club. <laughs> I've never heard of that. I have no idea what that is. So I was really, there's not a whole lot on this movie, actually. Yeah. It didn't do well, like budget wise. I saw that. Yeah. Like it, it, it was, like, yeah, it was kind of a bomb. Yeah. Which is a shame because I thought it was a good movie. Yeah, mm -hmm. fifty million to make, and it made less than three thousand, three hundred thousand, or whatever, on this opening weekend. So, wow. Americans probably thought it was too British. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so yeah. you want to go around and give a rating? <laughs> sure. Um, am I going first? Are you guys going first? You can go first. Um, I'll probably give it an eight. The soundtrack, <laughs> that's Wes's standard. Uh, soundtrack was good. The acting was good. I was entertained. I laughed. I I enjoyed the movie. What do you guys think? I, I agree with you. I, I give it a solid eight. I really enjoyed the movie. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I love music and I... Uh, I remember, I don't remember back that far, but I mean, I mean, I remember the early days of, of, of like uh, FM radio and album oriented rock stations and things like that. And, and uh, it was kind of cool. I, I really enjoyed it. Loved the acting. Um, yeah, definitely solid eight. And to the surprise of no one, it's an eight from me too. <laughs> All right. So that yeah, that's it's a great solid movie, I think. Yeah. I, I would recommend if you see it at the store if it comes on any kind of streaming. It's not on right now, but like you can if you have Amazon Prime, you can do it for three ninety nine. If you're looking for something different to see, something funny, it has pretty much has everything. I would definitely give this a recommendation. Uh, yeah. So uh, now, next week, it, well, this week, <laughs> <laughs> next time, it's my turn for the, to choose the movie. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> this is Another, a movie. What, what Gosling flick are you fucking <laughs> no, not, I No, he's not in this. Um, so this is a movie that's on Netflix. It, it leaves the end of the month. Um, I know Dominic hasn't seen this. I don't know if you've seen it. It was on my best of 2012 list. Uh, so I, I definitely remember enjoying it, but I haven't seen it since. And that is the, uh, the perks of being a wallflower. I've seen it. Have you? Okay. Yeah. I haven't yeah. seen it since it came out, probably. But yeah. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this will be a first watch for Dominic, then. Okay. I don't remember much about it, honestly. <laughs> so that'll be interesting um, next week. But uh, until then, John, you want to talk a little bit about your podcast? I have a podcast called We Like Wrestling Podcast. Uh, it's a weekly podcast where we talk about wrestling, uh, past pay-per-views, current stuff 
Um, this week we're going to talk about the World Heavyweight title and you know what that means to certain guys. <laughs> I guess the best way to say it. <laughs> um, we're on iTunes, we're on Spotify, wherever you find podcasts. We're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. We like wrestling podcasts. Awesome. And of course, uh, you can subscribe right here on YouTube. I've got new reviews coming up. I just posted Promising Young Woman, finally. Uh, <laughs> so we got that up, and there's wasn't a lot that, more to come. What? Lastly, wasn't that your uh, nickname in high school? Promising Young Woman? <laughs> P-Y-W? All right. <laughs> so, yeah, subscribe here on YouTube, youtube.com slash westside of 515. Like the show on Facebook, facebook.com slash West True Bayless. And of course, you can follow me on the Twitter and the Instagram at West Bayless. Until next time, truth at